Back with more arpeggios for friends. That's I'm it. Sean Daniel. I'm Justin Mitchell. And today we're gonna dive into seven chords. That's right. Specifically major and minor seven chords. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna be playing some chord voicings and he's gonna be arpeggiating all over this, right? All over. And then we're gonna show you how you can add the really, you know, the major set, the major seven is probably my favorite interval. It's in it's music. beautiful. Anytime I get a chance, like I like, it's my spirit chord. <laughs> yes. I guess. Yeah. Right. Major seven. Yeah. And if if we're really gonna talk about arpeggios and and you know, uh, I believe usually the major seven is typically the five of that minor relative minor chord. Okay. You know, so as you're playing like your your major seven, you it it fits perfectly into extend the it. minor. Yeah. yeah extend so, it into it. Yeah. So I'm just going to play, uh, what am I going to play? I'm going to play D minor 7 to C major 7. Okay. So like if we're in the key of C, this would be like a 2-1. 2-1, yeah. Right? Just yeah. Jamming I'm going to play a little higher. Mm -hmm. and so I'm going to play up here and back mm -hmm. here. All right? Sounds so, good. So 1, 2, 3, 4. going to be kind of like a couple positions that you can use mm -hmm. and you know it's arpeggios with friends because we have our cheese plate out still and honestly i thought that eh, we would kind of compare different arpeggios to different types of cheeses oh man i it would be yeah we have to right so we've got uh we have cheddar which, which be, is a major chord man that'd be a major triad yeah think about arpeggio. like mac and cheese and cheddar you know like it's it right it major as it gets and then i guess the opposite of cheddar would probably be swiss right so those would be minor yeah Major seven would be what? What do we have here? I what feel like smoke gouda. I feel like this smoke gouda right here is major seven That's, okay. all over. What else do we have here? We've got a. Uh, we've got what? What is this? What is what kind of cheese? Is that is blue this? cheese? I think this is blue cheese. Or don't eat it. It could be marble. No, it's cheese. No, it's definitely cheese. Yeah, definitely cheese. So this is half diminished. Minor seven flat five. Or full diminished. I hate blue cheese. I don't know. What would like American cheese be? Oh man, that's hard because American cheese could be minor. That'd be or like I mean, a, major. No, those would be like uh, Dixie Chicks power chords. <laughs> yes. Right. Or like Toby Keith or something like that. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I don't like blue cheese. Yeah. Blue cheese is gross. Oh man. Anyways, we're gonna get into well, let's let's do major seven first, right? It's my favorite. Let's do yeah. it. Yeah. And first, before we're gonna root a lot of these on the A string, right? That's right. But first, I want to do one thing where we just look at a chord voicing that is an arpeggio, and that's the one that I was using earlier on. <laughs> The C major seven, right. right? So if you look, it's just a staircase. The root note is whatever the D string is, right? This is a C, this is an octave C, C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Mm -hmm. And then staircase it down a string back a fret. So all, this, this is one of the few instances on a guitar where it, in perfect order, from string to string, kind of goes up. Mm -hmm. And it's a great illustration of a one, a three, a five, and a major seven. So you could arpeggiate it. Or play it all as one, right? Mm -hmm. that's so right. that's just a chord voicing that can double as an arpeggio. Most of the time, you have to like share, uh, like a string shares like two notes, maybe three notes, mm -hmm. right? So Justin, please educate us on perhaps an A string rooted arpeggio. Well, first we'll briefly cover uh, something that we did in the in the last video. So we're just gonna make the plain old major shape, and since we're doing C, we're doing D minor to C major. So yep. we'll just start on the third fret of the A string, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna make you guys do that big pinky reach. Yep, to you the can't reach, third. again, jump. That's right. Three to seven. Right. So then, we're gonna do the roll that we talked about with our middle finger here, and actually, all of the next three notes are on the same fret, this fifth fret right here. So it's three, seven, switch to the D string, five, switch to the G string, also five, switch to the B string, Five again, you guessed it. And then right here is where we're, we're gonna finish for now, which is the third fret of the high E. So again, it's. So you'll notice that I, I roll this direction, but usually when I come back, I only use my middle finger for these two, and then I allow my index finger to catch there on the uh, fifth fret 
of the D string, which would be the, the five, and then pinky on the three, back to the one, so. Just a basic shape. There you go. So what makes a major seven chord? Well, you need one, three, and five. That's so you right. got a major triad, and then the major seven. The seventh note on the major scale. See, it would be a B, right? That's right. Now, a quick tip, by the way. If you ever want to find the seventh note in any scale, in any key, mm -hmm. it's way easier to count backwards than it is forwards. So, it's so much easier. Like, say if it's like, say if it's a key you're not that familiar with, right? Mm -hmm. Like, say you don't really play in the key of F that much, mm -hmm. right? Instead of being like, okay. F, whole step, G, whole step, A, so on and so forth. Just go back to the note before F. Right and that's here. the seventh note, right? F, E. The major seven will always be one half step below. Right behind. And the minor seven, which would be the flat seven, of course, and, mm -hmm. and will be one whole step. And that's why I think a lot of people kind of get like stuck into always thinking a spot and going forward. Right? Mm -hmm. Like a linear way of learning because we use numbers a lot. In music. That's okay? right. And that's how we're kind of taught to count, right? Mm -hmm. When really music, even though it uses numbers and letters and stuff, it's not a thing. It's like a circle. It goes forward and backwards. Yeah, exactly. So it's a good habit to get into to be able to go forwards and backwards with arpeggios, but also think of what's behind the root note yeah? Yeah. instead of just what's ahead of it. Especially once we begin to connect shapes, because the, the goal is to inspire your creativity so that you see these patterns everywhere and you, you have no limits and you can just explore uh, and that, that's the goal. So, to continue here, we have uh, the C major. So one, three, five. Instead of rolling to this eight, we're gonna use our index finger right here on the fourth fret of uh, the G string to hit the B, right? And that's the major seven of the C. If you, yep. if you did the previous video and you're here, you probably got that under your, under your belt pretty easily. So we're just going to move on to add the, the uh, major three here, right? Which is the fifth fret of the B string. So here. Be here, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I would reach for. So you're going to do uh, another jump or step to the seventh fret of the high E, so we have. And so I'm, when I play things like this, I, I like to think in, in triplets because of these shapes are so triplet friendly. So it's triplet, 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 triplet. And you know, you can also kind of offset them, like go three notes at a time, back mm -hmm. a note and then up. Right? Right, like, so, one, two, three, one, two, three. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's, there's really no limit to what you can do and how you can play these. But you have to be able to see it in your mind's eye first. That's right. And then how you manipulate it is just up to what, you know, your style, what kind of thing you're going for. Yeah, and if you're a little more advanced and, and you're, you know, kind of, kind of bored by this, you can always try string skipping. You could try doing, like, the first three notes here. So you're mm -hmm. skipping, you're going forward half and back the other half, or you can just, you know, skip all over the place. You can do every other note. There you go. I mean, it, I, it's, I personally, I think that's probably the best way to like learn, like to really get inside an arpeggio. Oh yeah. Because I think that the danger or, or, you know, something that's interesting about learning arpeggios is you start with the root note and then the shape forms from that. Okay. Right. I think when you skip, mm -hmm. you have a better picture of the whole thing. Yeah. Well, then let's go over that. Let's, let's do it. Let's, let's, skip, let's yeah. skip it up. So basically, we're going to start here at this C, and you know the next note is the, the in the in the the structured arpeggio right. is this three. But uh -huh. we're going to go to the five instead. So we're going to go right. So from the third fret on the A string to the D string fifth fret. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to come back to what would have been the second note in the structured arpeggio, which is right. the major third. Mm -hmm. And then, since we're doing jazzy chords, we're gonna go to the major seventh, right? There you go. I'll oh, see it. There it is, right? Oh, so good. Major seventh. And so, you know, as as an ex as an exercise, I'll give you that first half, and then you know, just explore the the second half, skipping strings and things. So, so. 
So skipping intervals in an arpeggio to me is the best way to learn to really solidly see it in your mind's eye. Yeah? Right. Because otherwise it is just kind of muscle memory in your hand. Mm -hmm. bum, 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 bum. But once you start doing that, as soon as you start skipping, then it's like, okay, I really, really get it from the ground up. Right. And you can do that with either the uh, pick or with a pick in your middle finger. So you can actually like pick, 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 or you can like, you know, I'm using the... Um, instead of skipping the string with my pick, which you, you know maybe not have the dexterity to do, you can always just pluck with your middle finger and it'll be just fine. There you go. So let's do so, the minor one too. So the the minor shape, we're going to use D. So uh, we're going to move up to the root note on the fifth fret of the A string. So we know that for the minor chord, we know that this minor third is what we're going to go to next, which is always one and a half step away. The minor third is always one and a half step just away. Just waiting for you. Whole step and a half step. Then the five, which is the uh, seventh fret of the D string. And then because this is a minor chord, we cannot play a major seven interval. We have to play a flat seven interval. Have to. Have to, mm -hmm. which is, if we remember, it is always one whole step away from the tonic, right? Which we've spoken already. That's right, exactly. Yeah. So we have fifth fret, eighth fret, seventh fret of the D string. Then we're gonna switch to the G string, fifth fret, then we're gonna hit the minor third on the B string, which is the sixth fret. And then right there at the fifth fret of the high E. Mm -hmm. And then I think that's what I would pull off. You could reach. That's that's quite a stretch. So we'll just we'll stick to here. Uh, the eighth fret of the high E, right? Oh, yeah. Which cool. would be again the, I believe, the flat seven. Mm -hmm. So And honestly, just a lesson in intervals, right? Like mm -hmm. They're so important the way you stack these. Kind of like how we were just talking, like, if you're playing a minor seven, you can't play a major seven. Again, this is music. You can do whatever that. You can't. Whatever absolutely. the hell you want. But, so like for an example, right? So, like we talked about earlier, my favorite interval is a major seven. Right? So it's a D major seven. As soon as we introduce, introduce, right. introduce a minor third, it's like, oh my god. Yeah, we, oh, you oh. get get into uh, harmonic minor territory and that's where you can do like the uh, you know like right uh -huh. so definitely like a flavor that you might want to oh yeah for sure. but if you're looking for that beautiful major seven interval uh, and you hear that minor third in there it's not my gonna friend work. you're sorely mistaken that's right it's gonna be yeah so anyways so we've got minor seven arpeggios right and major seven arpeggios. That's let's, right. Let's do a dominant seven arpeggio too. A dominant seven arpeggio? Yeah. Okay, so because we are uh, doing, let's see, so we're doing a D minor and, and a C major seven. So yeah. we got to do a G dom seven. Five chord, right? That's right. As we've talked about before, dominant seven chords exist on the fifth note. In That's it. right. So, and so C, D, E, F, G. Even though I think that uh, I may not necessarily play this shape here, I mm -hmm. think we're gonna stick to root on the A string. Cool. Just to keep it simple. So, which is also, I, I think, in just a, a bigger music theory discussion, how we just talked about adding a minor third to a major seven interval is kind of nasty. Right. Adding a minor seven to a major third interval, which is a dominant thing, right, is actually pleasing. Yeah. Right. Bluesy, Creates I guess, might be the word. Yeah. There's, sure. a te there's tension yeah. in a much more a socially acceptable way that's right i suppose right, right? Uh, so it's just like it just kind of makes you think about intervals and like how you approach them and stuff like that too so. right yeah and so when you when you're playing lead and you're using arpeggios to do so um obviously when you're in the moment you may not be consciously thinking but you know you're when especially when you're composing a solo you're so fancy you're trying to think about like where your resolution is going to be. And so uh -huh. you're creating consonants and you're creating dissonance and you're moving to and from chords. And that's another thing that, uh, you know, playing with arpeggios really helps you do is because you're, you're going to start thinking of this is the chord I'm at now. This is the chord that's two chords away. And uh -huh. this is what's in between them. How can I get from this to this and still, you know, acknowledge the chord that comes in between? Especially when you're talking about improvising. Improvising is mainly what I'm talking about, for sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you're just playing lead over chords or whatever, and you know what the chord progression is going up, mm -hmm. you can use this as an opportunity to really do it. Absolutely. So okay. Dominant 7. Dominant 7. So we're going to start uh, with G, right? So we have uh, the 10th fret of the A string, make you much easier to do the pinky reach here. Mm -hmm. um, so for the 3, the 5 is the 12th fret here. So we have 10, 14, 12, 
on the D string. And then we're gonna go to a flat seven interval, which is the 10th fret of the G string. So already you can hear the there tension that that creates. Cool. So then you're just gonna follow it through the same exact shape that we've been doing with everything else. There's the three, right? There you go. So we have 12th fret of the B string, 10th fret of the high E, then the G there, uh, the 14th fret um, of the uh, high E, so. Beautiful. Yeah. Last thing I want you to do for me, Justin. Sure, what's that? I want you to take one root note. Yeah. I want you to play a major seven arpeggio, minor seven arpeggio, dominant seven arpeggio, off the same root. No problem, so we'll do with C, so we have major seven. minor and then dominant so, there it is it's yeah. done ladies and gentlemen yeah so there we go so if you want to hear some good arpeggio playing check out this guy's sound oh yeah. yeah good stuff on there there's even some stuff that i'm guest playing on. that's right yeah so i'll and link you there below will, there'll be a lot more you know in the, more, more to come more to come for, for sure, sure. uh-huh yeah. Arpeggios with friends. Arpeggios with friends, episode two. Thank you.